I have seen everything that has ever happened, ever will happen, ever could happen, and yet, what the hell is this? Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 things you missed in What If Episode 8. It's right there. Sorry to break it to you, Nat, but Death Star plans are not in the main computer. The answer is right there. For this list, we're looking at the Easter eggs, comic book references, and MCU callbacks you might have missed in the imaginative animated series. Since we'll be talking about everything we watched this week, a spoiler warning is in effect. What was your favorite moment in this week's What If? And did you notice that the scene where the Avengers were defeated looked identical to Iron Man's vision in Age of Ultron? Let us know in the comments below. Number 10. Ultron defeats Thanos in a familiar place. Fascinating. Our jaws dropped when Ultron decimated Thanos moments after the Mad Titan arrived with five Infinity Stones. We were so shocked by the robot's overwhelming victory that we didn't even notice where it went down at first. Dialing Avengers Tower. Hello. Hi, I'd like to order a pizza. If you look at the wide shot, you'll see Ultron appears to be standing on a ruined Avengers Tower. Since the show's robot origins mirror the main timeline, this is the place where the villain was essentially born. He notably attacked the Avengers and got away with the Mind Stone shortly after he came to be. Seeing this Ultron take the remaining five cosmic items and slay the heroes where he was born quickly establishes the robot as a serious threat. Wow, I see everything. There are worlds beyond my own. Worlds that need me. Number 9. The Terminator callbacks fit the story's dark fate. Ultron's going after the nuclear codes. I don't know how much longer we can hold them off. We have to take out the satellite network. He won't be able to launch the nukes without them. Once the AI known as Ultron devastated the world, we immediately thought he'd get along with the incredibly destructive Skynet superintelligence system from the Terminator franchise. Their dark objectives are far from the only parallel between each villain's respective universe. The scene where Ultron launches the world's nuclear weapons looks eerily similar to the time Skynet fired its Earth's nukes in Terminator 3. And when Captain Marvel confronts the Infinity Stone-powered robot, she hints at seeing the first Terminator movie. Listen, Skynet. I've seen the Killer Robot movie, and I gotta say, I really don't think it needs a sequel. Unfortunately, it seems like she never got back to Earth to see the iconic Judgment Day sequel. But at least Ultron destroyed the world Skynet style before she had to suffer through Terminator Genesis. Everything's changed. The 1984 John sent you to, it no longer exists. No, this is all wrong, all right? John, John sent me here to save you. From the Terminator that was sent back to kill me, I know, but we already took care of him. Number 8. Natasha and Clint reference a pair of sad MCU scenes. Wait, stop it! That… you found it? That was my box. An old Hydra base in Siberia. The last two Avengers standing travel to a remote Siberian Hydra facility in a last-ditch attempt to stop Ultron. This is the same place where Tony Stark learned that the Winter Soldier assassinated his parents and where he fought Cap. After reaching this remote location, the duo recreates another harrowing MCU moment. As Ultron drones close in on the heroes, Natasha desperately tries to keep Clint from falling. Their positions are a dark reflection of what happened in Endgame. I may go. No. Please, no. During the film, a hopeful Natasha let herself fall so Clint could get the Soul Stone and save lives. The show sadly features a tired Avenger who lets go of his friend's hand while she escapes. Hopefully, Hawkeye's final act leads to Natasha saving many lives. We should keep moving. More sentries are likely on their way. I still don't get it. Number 7. Why the Watcher Keeps His Oath All those worlds, all that suffering, and you just watched. I swore an oath. I cannot exert my will in the natural order of things. I cannot intervene. Although the Watcher has repeatedly said that he refuses to interfere, he hasn't fully explained why he stays out of events on the show. But the comics offer a tragic reason behind this solemn oath. The answer is right there. I can show them. I can intervene. I could save the multiverse. 
and so many, many lives. During a flashback, we learn that the Watchers are an intelligent race of aliens with access to fantastic technology. However, Watu and his brethren tried to help other beings advance by giving an alien race nuclear energy. But they later returned to see what happened and found the beings had destroyed their planet with nuclear weapons. The Watchers vowed to only observe without interfering for the rest of their essentially immortal existences to make up for this tragedy. Fortunately for the multiverse, Watu and other Watchers have broken that promise. You cannot compute the power of my will. Number 6. Black Widow Carries Her False Father's Shield Oh. Clint. Clint. Is this my color? During Black Widow's search through the KGB archives, she uncovers a shield. Its design and presence in Russia suggests that it once belonged to the Red Guardian. While she wasn't asked to take up that mantle, a father figure in her life was. The 2021 Black Widow film confirmed that Red Guardian was assigned to play the role of Natasha's dad while they were undercover. Okay, girls, I'm, I'm having trouble hearing you, but Natasha, there's something I need you to know. I need you to know that I... I'm sorry. No more excuses, okay? Although the duo didn't have the best relationship, we're sure he'd be happy to know that his daughter of sorts is using his old shield in battle. And judging by the expert way Natasha handled her father figure's weapon in this episode, she will succeed in taking Ultron down. Number 5. A very different Ultron fought a robotic uprising in the comics. Ultron got his wish. With the infinite power of the Mind Stone, Ultron began to lay waste to the planet. Ultron isn't the only AI in the Marvel Universe who dominated the world. In the comics, a group of heroes from different dimensions arrives on an Earth full of hostile machines. They learn that Ultron merged with Professor X's Cerebro machine and used robots to hunt down living threats. Our Cerebro is working. Charles's mind is connected to every living person on the planet. If he were forced to concentrate hard enough on a particular group, let's say mutants, for example, he could kill us all. The heroes eventually meet a version of Ultron who wants to stop the evil AI from continuing to wreck the world. In a surprising scene, it's revealed that Hank Pym digitized his mind and is pretending to be Ultron. Although we know a human's under the metal shell, it is surreal to watch this traditionally evil robot fighting for good. We're not holding our breath that Ultron will embrace the light on the show, though. You don't have to do this. I made you for peace. It's evolution. Only a primitive mind would fail to see the distinction. Number 4. Ross Marquand has now voiced two Marvel Big Bads. Isn't this more fun than just watching? And to be honest, it's a lot less creepy on your part. We have Ross Marquin to thank for every sinister and snarky line that came out of the evil robot's mouth. This superb actor is probably best known for his role as Aaron on The Walking Dead. However, Marquin is also praised for his unbelievable talent for doing impressions. Matthew McConaughey! Well, I'll tell you what, I mean, this is just, uh... This is something else. This is stellar. This is, uh... This is interstellar. Thanks to his acting skills and ability to mimic voices, he was easily able to slip into the role of Red Skull. You are too late, Captain Carter. I have summoned the champion of <laughs> Markwind has given the Captain America villain a voice in multiple MCU projects over the last few years. Since he's done such a great job of picking up where the original Red Skull and Ultron actors left off, we would love to see him originate a Marvel supervillain role in the future. Uh, you and me, we're done professionally, mate. Absolutely done. Number 3. Zola Finally Gets a Robot Body So, you might feel a little poke here, or not. I don't really get how you work. Download commencing. Years after Hydra scientist Arnim Zola uploaded his mind to computers, Hawkeye and Natasha transferred the villain's consciousness to an Ultron drone. Their actions are a great callback to a recurring plot point in the comics. Arnim Zola has a long history of putting his digital mind in a robotic shell. And since we saw his brain on a computer in live action during Captain America the Winter Soldier, the villain could have risen as a dangerous robot in the main MCU timeline. Arnim Zola was a German scientist who worked for the Red Skull. 
He's been dead for years. First correction, I am Swiss. Second, look around you. I have never been more alive. However, the sight of Chris Evans battling a machine with Zola's face might have been a little over the top for that relatively grounded movie. But the animated What If world was the perfect medium for Zola to embrace a metal shell. What was that for? Look, just for caution, in case you want to try anything funny. Your team building instincts need work. Number two, President Rogers. I don't understand. This should not be possible. Oh, but anything is possible in a multiverse. While the Watcher and Ultron were trading blows in an epic brawl, they were also traveling through different realities. They eventually land in a universe where Steve Rogers is being sworn in as Commander in Chief of the United States. I'm Stephen Grant Rogers. This easter egg was a much bigger deal in the Ultimates comic series. After Steve Rogers is elected president and gives an awesome speech, he has to balance his superhero missions with his political career. He ultimately decides that it would be best for the country if he resigned and focused on being Captain America again. Although we know Steve's presidential career didn't work out in one universe, we would not mind visiting a world where he leads the U.S. Looks like you're giving the orders now, Captain. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. The Watcher Has Undermined Big Bads Before A grim episode ended on a positive note when The Watcher decided to bring in a sinister Doctor Strange to help stop Ultron. I'm out of options. That thing has left me no choice. <laughs> Been there. If the observant alien's plan succeeds, the robot will be the latest in a long line of supervillains that were undermined by a Watcher. While there are many examples of Watu thwarting evildoers, one of his most memorable victories involved Galactus, the hungry cosmic villain planned on draining Earth's energy. After failing to convince Galactus to leave the planet alone, the Watcher guided Human Torch to the ultimate nullifier device. The threat of this weapon was enough to send the cosmic villain packing. While we don't know if the show's Watcher will help indirectly or punch the evil robot himself, he is clearly ready to dismantle Ultron. I can't believe I'm about to say this. I see now. I need your help. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.